Okay, so I got Nuke open, and we're going to make our overscan. So previously, I'd always just do it in in a in 3D warp four uh, because it's just easier for me. Uh, it's quick, um, but some people want to do it this way. So we'll just do it this way as well, just so you can see it. But I think in, in yeah, we'll do it this for all of them anyway. So what I'm going to do is just going to load in my plate, I'm just read, and. We want our BGO2 plate, that's the one we used. And you'll see that we've got our compression folder in here. So if we click open, press one, we will have, let's go to input, we will have our footage. So, so that's at 4K DCP. So we need to add an overscan. So there is. So. First thing that we want to do is re bring up a reformat, and this will be our overscan. So I'm going to select that. If I just bring this over, and I'm just going to use the scale because it's easier to keep everything sort of relative. So the easiest thing to do is do a 1.1, but obviously you start to raise up your uh, render resolution, because obviously whatever you do here is now your render resolution. And yeah, so that's why it's sometimes easier just to do it through the the render resolution in, in the render settings. I'm just going to leave that as 1.1 now. And I'm just going to click and drag my Nuke LD node that I've uh, imported in. So I did just... Uh, click and drag that in like that. We don't want two. So I've got my Nuke LD node and I want to make sure that this is on understore. And this has all my values I have for my understore. So we can sort of see that actually at the moment, if I press D to turn this off, it's not doing what we want. So on our reformat node, we change our resize type to none and preserve bounding box. And now we can see that our overscan is, is is a lot. We're going to be effectively going to be rendering a lot of um, excess uh, pixels for no reason. So we need to refine this sort of how big we want to do it. We don't want to make a custom... Oh, 1.05. We don't want to make a custom overscan for each shot. We want to make something that's going to work nicely for every single shot. So we're not, we can just put a generic sort of uh, value in there. So even at 0 0.04, that's quite all right. And don't forget if we might have, to be honest, we're at our widest. So I don't think our distortion is going to get much, uh, uh, much larger than that. So we could leave it. We can go to three and see how close that is. And don't forget, this is just going to reduce our amount of rendering. Only by a tiny amount, but it's also... We just want to make sure that it's all in there. We actually do actually have a bit of a pin cushioning in our distortion, which is not, not the best, but because it's a note, it should be okay. So I'm going to go with our scale to keep our rendering down. We've got our overscan, and if I press D on that now we can see that our distortion is going to fit nicely in there. So if we uh, have anything that's going out, rendering anything CG that's going outside a frame, we're going to be rendering enough in there to uh, apply that distortion to bring it back in. So hopefully 1.3 is enough, so we'll leave it as that. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to sort of a zero out our rendering. So I'm just going to reformat again. And I'm just going to scale and leave as it is. And resize type width and leave that. So our render resolution is now is 4219 by 225. So that is if we just turn our distortion off. So it'd be rendering this. So we'd always have this amount of data to uh, bring back into the distortion basically. So if you didn't have the overscan and there was something going off here and you put a distortion on, 
you wouldn't have anything rendered here. So this kind of is the overscan is to over render things so you don't have to worry about things that I've missed. So this is our render resolution, so I will write that down. So you want to make note of that, that's what you'll be rendering at for full resolution. But we don't really want to work at that resolution because that can be quite heavy. Um, and it's up to you. What I would probably do is add another reformat. Change this to scale and 0 0.5. So now what, we've halved our resolution. So that will make... So that should make no difference to our sizing. It just means now when we bring this into Maya, it's going to be a little bit lighter for it to load in. And then when we do render it, we can uh, render it off at the, the correct resolution, which is this. So I will do a half res undistorted plate. So I'm just going to go right. I'm just going to go double click on this so it's up at the top. I'm going to go to file. And I'll save it all in the same place because it just makes sense to have it all there. And I'm just going to just rename this to VGO2 underscore U, oh no, UDP half. So I know that's the understorted plate half res. And I'm still going to render them out as EXRs because it will help with my lighting as well. And I'm going to pretty much leave all of this as it is. Make sure that's on input and just click render. So now it's going to render everything out. Hopefully it should take too long. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I suppose while we're waiting for that to render, we can just go over to Maya. So... If I go file, uh, set project, we want to make sure we're in the right project. So I've got the file set project BO1. So now if I go file import, it's going to automatically navigate to our correct file structure. So I'm going to load in my CMM camera. And if we look for it, it will bring in our original plate. But we don't want that. We want to... Uh, what we can do, that's still going to be rendering. But if we're on our first frame... So all our elements are actually all together in the element folder. So... Let's select our half res. We can choose image sequence now. And of course, it's coming out as raw, that's fine. And we want, because we transcode as Rec 709, we may as well just stay in that. Um, you might be using ACES um, for the sake of keeping it very, very simple. Um, I'm just going to use the, the default. Uh, view transforms and um, to not confuse things but generally if you're working in a very confined space it doesn't matter so much and I've lost a chain of thought so next thing we'll just go import import our scan so we've got an onset layout import our OBJ So at this point, we probably do want to reference it. Um, I'll go through referencing a little bit later. Um, we'll do that once. Uh, I don't know if that's loading or if that's taking a long time to come in. It's definitely loading. I've probably, it's probably frozen now, so. Cool, so if I... Uh, Set that camera and just change my alpha gain to 0 0.7, which is depth to 1. 
we'll notice that it's not working. It's our uh, it's not fitting because we need to adjust our camera to our overscan. So the simplest way to do this is go to our camera shape and you'll have camera scale here. So if you remember what we adjusted it to, was it 0 0.03? And you'll notice it still won't fit because we also now need to change our, our render resolution. Oh. Select fit to resolution gate or film gate, sorry. And now that's going to fit because our resolution gate has not been set. So if we click up here, our resolution is, is wrong for what we need to do. So if we selected fit to resolution gate, it's not going to work. But if we set to film gate on our camera, it's going to be correct because now that's working with the overscan that we set and the sensor size we've set up. So the next thing that we really want to do is make sure that we've got the correct uh, render settings. So if we go to our render settings, um, let's just double check, I can't remember what it was. Uh, 4219, 4219, I'm just gonna drag this over there so I can read it. 4219, by 2225. Cool. So now if we select fit to resolution gate and fit to film gate, be absolutely no difference. So that's how we would do our overscan and set it up. So it's quite simple. Um, you just make sure you set your camera scale and your render resolutions the same way. The other way that I would do it is what I usually do is do through warp 4 and that means that you don't have these sort of uh, these black edges to show where you're actually working, which is fine. This is probably what you're doing in when you're working in an, in, a, in a company because it helps with animators to see how far they can go off uh, screen and stuff like that. The other way I do it, I just do it as normal. So I just use warp four with no overscan. Then um, I would go to my render settings. I would go to system. And I would just go to render settings, overscan, and I'd type in five for five percent overscan. So now that's going to magically render five percent overscan on everything that I've done anyway. But now I've done it like this. This will render five percent over the top of this. So I need to make sure that I put that, get rid of that. So there's no overscan. That's how I'd do it normally. Um, I wouldn't, if for personal projects, for me it's just easier to type in five or ten um, but if you want to know how to do it this way you can do it that way cool so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename that to CMM camera point group And I'm just going to save this now. So if now if I go File, uh, Save Scene As. Hold on. Set Project. That's probably because I've imported that in. So File, Save Scene As. And now it's going to save it in the Booble 01 Scenes. So I'm going to call this CMM. V01. Uh, and click save as. That'll probably take a little bit of time. So the next thing that we probably want to do is actually like um we'll probably Do it a little bit later. We don't necessarily need it for these shots. We'll do it on the shots that we more needed, but um, effectively there would be bubbles in the background of this, um, so we don't need to worry too much about that for now. Um, but yeah, that's how you do the overscan. We've got it all set up in Maya. We saved it. 
set to go and we've got everything here pretty much all done so i'm gonna go through and do all the other shots like that now um you don't need i don't think you need to what i don't know yeah sorry i can't speak i don't think i need to do it for every single one um because the cameras are going to be exactly the same there's barely any ones that move apart from the last ones but yeah hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial and um drop a comment in the comment section if you've got something to ask or say anything you want it's fine and uh, don't forget to like it it's always nice and uh yeah we'll see you in the next one thanks for watching